You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm Stephen Cabral, and I'm happy to have you back. I'm happy to have you on our second host call of the weekend, where we're going to go through another five additional questions. Hopefully, you tuned in yesterday, completely different from yesterday's house calls. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually share with you right now that if you've been writing in questions, we will get to your question. We're getting a little backlogged. I think we have about 12 more in the queue to go. Please do feel free to ask any questions that you may have. And what we're going to try to do is just go kind of one main question or one main topic per person, and then you can always rotate back through again as well. But again, I'm always happy to answer your questions, and I will always do my best to continue to do that. And I want to just make sure everybody gets theirs heard. And also, kind of in that same vein, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my answers stay to about three minutes. If I have to, eventually, I'm going to get a timer, and I'm going to set that timer up and just make sure we get through at least uh, five of those questions, 10 per week. So that will keep us on a nice, even flow. So the first question today is from Cassie. She's writing in, Hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you so much for providing all the knowledge and information you share with us and most of all for free. It is so inspiring to see a person do something for the better of society and not only to make a quick buck. My question is regarding the book, The China Study. I know you reviewed this a long time ago, but can't find which episode and was wondering if you could re-review. I'm currently rereading the book and just want to know what you think and if every study in it seems trustworthy, etc. So, Cassie, this is a good question, and I did review it way back. It was like in the, before you even reached episode 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a re-review of it. And what I like to do on this show is I like to give as much of an unbiased side of the story as possible. That means that I'm not pro-vegan. I'm not pro-vegetarian. I'm not pro-paleo. I'm not pro-keto. I'm not pro-anything. I'm into what's called bio-individuality. I treat each person as their own individual. I look at their genetics or their genotype. I look at their phenotype, kind of where they're at, where they've become. And then what I do is design a plan based on that for them. However, just by listening to the podcast alone, you can start to understand what is best for your body. And you don't always have to do a consultation with myself or one of the health practitioners on our team. You can just know what you need to do and start to implement that as well. And talking about this, the China study is one of those things. Now, I do want you to know that I am a fan or proponent of sustainability. I'm a fan of our environment. It is where we live. It's our nature. And I'm a fan of making sure that my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren all have the opportunity to live in a world that is not polluted, that they don't have to see these increasing rises in cancer, which is about to be one out of two people, diabetes, which is about to be one out of two people, heart disease, high blood pressure, one out of three, one out of four people. These are not statistics that we want to see in our society. And these are all diet and environment based. So they are all literally 95%. That means there are a few people who will have congenital based issues, but still the environment plays such a great role in that. And so does diet. We have to stop believing that we can eat the amount of meat. We can fish the amount of fish out of the seas and do all of these things and and pretend that they're sustainable. They are not. However, when we're talking about the China study, we're talking about a specific agenda where the author I believe he's doing great work, but the author did specifically point out, and this has been proven now, studies to promote an agenda on being vegan. And again, uh, if you are vegan listening to the podcast, I actually respect that greatly and believe that you should continue to be a vegan. And I think that it's tremendous for your health and you will get great benefits. However, if you're not doing well on that diet for the temporary time until you get your diet, I should say your body better balanced, you might do better with other products in there as well. However, if it's based on spiritual rate based reasons and not wanting to eat meat and harm animals, I totally respect that. And I actually think that that's a very noble thing to do. So there's no problem being happy, healthy, and following a vegan based, not just diet, but lifestyle, right? Because what we're trying to do is 
we're trying to do sustainability. We're also trying to be respectful to animals and not using them however we would choose to, but letting them live their own life as well. But let me just talk about today, the China study specifically, so that I don't offend every single group in the world. What I want to do is I want to talk about this, is that the China study did specifically look at, like one of the big studies was looking at cancer. And they found that people who ate a very specific form of protein, now they didn't really tell you as much, but the protein is called casein. It comes from milk. So casein is 80% of all protein in dairy. So there's whey protein, which is about the other 20%. They actually make protein supplements just on casein. It's a very cheap form of protein. People market it as time-released protein. They talk all these negative things about whey protein. I'll be talking about marketing a little later in the show as well. And it's very deceitful. Just because something's a slow digesting protein, doesn't mean it's good for you, but it is something that you can market. You can say, oh, this is a slow digesting protein, which means it's going to be good for your muscles and you can take it overnight. That doesn't mean it's healthy for you. And in this case, as the China study proved, as long with other studies as well, casein is very hard to digest. That's why it is more time released. And it raises IGF-1 levels. When you increase growth hormone levels or insulin-like growth factor, what happens is your chances of getting cancer and other uh, diseases does increase. And that's very well proven now. We don't need even any additional studies. It's very well scientific fact. So that's an interesting thing to look at. The other thing that's interesting to look at is that a lot of people, well, if we're looking at Asian cultures specifically, the chances of cancer are seem to be lower because genetically, as when we're talking about genetics or genotype, the IGF-1 levels seem to be lower in general. So again, I'm just going by science. I'm going by fact. I'm sharing those facts with you. So what are my takeaways from this? Well, my takeaways are this. The China study was obviously, just like any book, it's used to promote a certain philosophy and belief. I just happen to believe that the China study and what it is promoting will make people healthier in the long run. For example, you don't need to eat meat to be healthy. You don't. You can eat meat and you can still be healthy. And that's the other side I want to give it to it now. So let's say that you do want to include some meat in your diet because you do actually feel it makes you feel healthier. What we can do is you can cut down your meat or animal protein consumption to one meal per day. There is no, absolutely no real paleo-based society that, and I've said this before and I'll say it again and I'll keep saying it. There is no real paleo diet where you would wake up and you would have bacon and eggs. And then for lunch, you would have salmon, wild caught, of course, And then at dinner, you would have a grass-fed burger or a T-bone steak. That is not realistic. That is not a healthy diet. And that is absolutely not paleo. If you really want to be paleo, and I am paleo, but if you really want to be paleo, you will not eat meat every day and you will not eat meat three times a day. You will have it probably once per day and you will exercise quite a bit because you need to mimic being a hunter and gatherer and you need to go periods of time where you're doing an intermittent fast at least 12 hours overnight. If you're not doing that, you're not really paleo and if you eat that much meat throughout the day, I'm telling you right now, there are more studies than not showing that all of that meat can and will most likely lead to some type of cardiovascular based disease, colon cancer, or just other issues in general. Now, again, we are hunter-gatherers. I know that. I believe that. I've seen the science. I've read it. It's what I do. But we were mainly gatherers, and then we did our best to hunt. Think about all the millions of years before we were able to use tools and we were able to use you know, weapons and those types of things. What would you catch? You would catch things that were smaller than you that wouldn't kill you as well. You ate grubs. You ate crickets. You ate worms. You ate all of these things. That is real paleo. I don't eat those things myself, but that's real paleo. So, I went way off. This is basically its own show right now, so um, hopefully that answered your question. But what I'm saying is there, the truth sometimes lies in the middle, and I believe the China study was a good book. I do believe it was promoting one specific philosophy, which is totally fine. You write a book, you're, you're allowed to talk about whatever philosophy you want. And in the end, I believe you'll get a lot of benefit from reading it, and I believe you'll get a lot of benefit from steering yourself away from consuming so much meat. Okay. Alex is up next. Alex wrote, hi, I was wondering if you had a good probiotic record recommendation on the market. I'm a student and need to be smart about my purchases. Okay. So Alex, yes, absolutely. We offer many different probiotics in my wellness center and all of the different probiotics are used based on a person's lab results. And so unless you're running your labs using an organic acids test, you're not going to exactly know what is right for you. However, if you're doing pretty well overall, you're pretty healthy, or maybe you just have a little bit of gut issues or suspect maybe there's a little bit of bacterial overgrowth or dysbiosis or maybe a little bit of candida, you'll use the clean gut probiotic. It's called the clean gut probiotic. And of course, all my recommendations 
things can be found out in the show notes or just go to stephencabral.com forward slash store. And under the supplements, you'll of course find Clean Gut Probiotic. We use that for anywhere between one and three months. It helps clean out some minor candida to overgrowth. It helps clean up minor bacterial overgrowth and it helps repopulate the gut with good healthy strains of bacteria. All have been clinically proven to work and this is a product that starts out with over 55 billion healthy good bacteria strains. And what we're looking at then after that, or if you're just looking for an overall good quality malt probiotic that you take every day, you can take the same one that I take and that's called the daily probiotic support. And I formulated this, I basically created this product. I've had to find a product and I had to find strains that I could use with my most sensitive gut-based clients. That means people who have had Crohn's, colitis, IBS, SIBO, Candida, anything that you could possibly imagine. And as I work them up, this is the probiotic that we use. And here's why. It's dairy-free, which is very rare. Very Most people don't know that. If you're sensitive to dairy, most probiotics contain dairy. And the second thing is, a lot of the people I work with with allergies, asthma, inflammation, they don't do well with histamines. It was so hard to get a probiotic that had no histamine reactivity. So that's why I use it because I'm prone to mastocytosis, which is just an increase in mast cells and it uh, increase in cytokines and inflammation. So I know that sits in my background. I know that I've taken over 3,000 antibiotics, uh, moxicillin capsules in my lifetime. Thank you to my wonderful doctors who prescribed them when I was younger. And so because of that, I will most likely have to be someone who just has to be a little bit more careful about their gut because they had all their childhood good strains of bacteria wiped out when they were a teenager. So again, thank you to those doctors. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Clean gut probiotic, if you just want to kind of uh, reset the population and then daily probiotic support, It's just about a dollar per day, which is really the cheapest that you can get a probiotic. It really is. If you can find a probiotic for less than a dollar a day, it most likely doesn't contain very much good stuff. And you do want to get the 50 billion colony forming units. That's what I was looking for, CFUs. So it's just 50 billion live uh, bacteria there. Okay. So Taylor is up next. Taylor, hi, Dr. Ball. I so enjoy your show. It fuels my passion of continuing healing for my body. Through testing, it has been shown that my body has... the need for mercury detox. I have mineral deficiency, parasites, and candida overgrowth. I feel unsure of what would be the first thing to go after and then what would be next and so on. I know that sometimes going after one of these things before the other could be pointless because I'm assuming there is an order. Can you help? Thanks, Taylor. Okay, it's a great question. And you know what? All of this is absolutely true and hardly ever talked about. You want to start biggest to smallest. You get a, you have to, what we call the big rocks. I've talked about this before. I think it was on a Mindset and Motivation Monday. Start with the big rocks first. Okay, so what this means is this. You need to get rid of the parasites and the bacterial overgrowth first. After that, you'll want to remove the candida, and then you can do the heavy metal. And the heavy metal can be done at the same time as the candida, and honestly, they're all going to be worked on at almost the same time because what you use to kill parasites, a lot of those herbs can be used to kill candida and bacterial overgrowth, and so on and so forth. What I do in particular is, here's this, I'll just give you my recommendation, very simple. What you're going to do is the six-week parasite protocol right on our website. So again, just go to stephengrabell.com forward slash store. I'll stop saying that now. That's where you'll find everything. Just go to the supplements and you go to parasite protocol. You have everything you need. Honestly, we send you the directions. I write the directions. I tell you what to do because you're not going to use the same as the supplement bottles. You use them very specifically. I give you the order. It's six weeks. When you finish your six weeks, it also comes with what foods to eat that are anti-parasitic. Now, you can do it at the same time or you can do it after. I recommend after. Once you stop the parasite protocol, you're going to go into the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. Again, that is on our website. We sell those products. We sell, it's my specific protocol. It's done in a very specific order from gentlest, stronger to stronger, so there's no die-off based issues. I give you my food plan based on all the research, what feeds candida, what doesn't. Because remember, you can have fruit when you have candida bacterial overgrowth. A lot of practitioners will tell you you can't. You just have to know which fruit to have. And again, unless you've done the research, you just don't necessarily know those things. This is my passion. This is what fuels me. I know that says what fuels you. I love doing the research. Like it's not work for me. It's not a chore. I enjoy doing this. I had to do it for myself originally. And then I just got better and better and and have just, it's it. It it is at the pinnacle. This is what I have. If it can ever get better, great. I'm going to improve it. But I've been using the same thing for four years, exact same. And it works fantastically well. I mean, I just did two Skype calls today with this exact same protocol. So 
I mean, if you can run the labs, great. If not, you can do the parasite, which I know that you're in the labs. And then you do the candida right afterwards. And then that's it. And then if you still need to do the mercury detox, I talked about this on episode 325. So just go to steamcabal.com forward slash 325. And we're getting this up. We're getting the brand new heavy metal detox up on the website. But it's very simple because it's all research based. Research shows that after six weeks of using three specific products, which is the enzyme biofilm disruptors, the crack cell chlorella, and the cilantro. If you do those things, you eliminate 87% of lead, 91% of mercury, 74% of aluminum. That's pretty phenomenal for just three nutritional supplements and eating well. Easy. You can do an infrared sauna along with it. And then after you're done with all that, wait the 12 weeks and then do another hair tissue mineral analysis to check your heavy metal and aluminum base levels. All right. Hopefully that helps. If not, ask again. John, John is saying, hi, Stephen. I regularly listen to a podcast called the Ben Greenfield podcast where Ben interviews experts, doctors, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I'm not going to go through this whole question, but basically what Ben did was he invited on another doctor and this doctor talked about how that in order to have a true detox, you need to detox at the cellular level. And then he goes on to talk about his specific protocol, which is, you know, just his specific kind of choreographed process. So here's the thing, John, this is where I'm going back to my first question, my first call today with Cassie. I talked about casein and how it's marketed as something that's great because remember, it's time released. That means it's great, right? No, it's not. Just because something's time released doesn't mean that it's still good for your body. Now, this doctor that he brought on, I know of the podcast, I know of this doctor. Well, I had to look up his protocol because I don't know his specific protocol. He is promoting something good. The product that he uses is called zeolite. And zeolite is, there's different ways to pronounce it, but it basically it's a volcanic mineral. It's a specific mineral, an ash actually, that's been shown to help with cell membrane permeability. It has also been shown to help disperse what are called cations in the blood. So cations are basically positive charges, and they allow for kind of stickiness and agglutination of the blood, which doesn't allow for very good removal of toxins for sure, but also leads to things like blood clots, high blood pressure, uh, stagnant lymph, all sorts of different things. So do I think zeolite is good? Yes, absolutely. I actually wrote about it, in my, which will be in my upcoming book soon, and it's a great product. I, I've never seen anyone need this specific product to get well, and I will say this, that here's my issue. And again, I don't, I don't want to step on toes. I never want to take, talk negatively of anyone. That's why I'm not mentioning this doctor's name. You can't promote a certain agenda and then put down all others to promote your agenda. Hopefully you know what I mean. Meaning that if you believe in a paleo-based diet, like meaning like, or let's just say you believe in eating a lot of meat because of all the minerals and all the vitamins and all the nutrition in meat. That's hard to refute because there's a lot of nutrition in meat. But when you say that's right for everyone, you are automatically wrong. You're promoting an agenda that is not right for everyone based on a lot of people's biology. For example, if someone has low stomach acid or they're on a PPI, not a good idea to be eating a lot of meat. That means it's just going to ferment in your stomach, cause bacteria, cause all sorts of based issues from there. It can actually cause additional acid reflux just because of the fermentation that happens in the gut. So there's so many different reasons why, right? So what I'm saying to this doctor is this. Let's all do the health community at large a favor by educating first, by teaching people first what's healthy. Let's not promote an agenda. For example, I have the Dr. Brawl Detox, but I never once say that you need to do it to be a healthy human being. If you do it, will you be healthier? Absolutely. If you do this doctor's... Now, this doctor, it's not even a detox. That's the problem. When you take zeolite, you are helping your body. You are helping cell membrane permeability. You are helping... And now, remember, zeolite is mainly used used in heavy metal detox. So we're not even talking about PCBs. We're not talking about VOCs. We're not talking about all these other things from the environment. We are talking specifically about heavy metals, but also we're talking at a cellular level. So what happens? Let's say you get all these toxins out of the cell. And I agree with that. So let's say you get them all out of the cell. Where do they go? They go into your blood. They go into the interstitial milieu. So what then? You still need to do a traditional detox, a real functional medicine detox, which is what? Liver support. Because your blood gets filtered by your liver and your liver then removes it through your stool or it gets processed and gets huffed off or it comes through the urine, but it has to go through the liver and the kidneys. You need to always be supporting your liver. Nothing's more important than that. Until you get your liver functioning properly first, there's not even a point in doing a cellular-based detoxification because you get, this stuff's going to end up in your bloodstream and you'll end up with a Herxheimer-based reaction. It's not smart. What I'm trying to say is this. 
Let's be good to people. As health practitioners, we have a duty. And our duty is never to promote a specific agenda, is not to promote a specific supplement. We can talk about the benefits of that supplement. Absolutely. We can talk about the benefits of a nutrition plan. What we can't do is put down other things. For example, you don't hear me talk a lot about juice cleanses because juice cleanses are not doing a lot to make the liver function better, but they are giving the body a reprieve, a time to relax, and that's hugely benefiting themselves. But also the reason I don't talk about a juice cleanse is because most people are doing, they're being promoted and sold fruit juice cleanses, meaning their juices are full of sugar and fructose. That's not what you want. If you do a juice cleanse, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, or I'm a fan of doing an afternoon juice or a morning juice, but it should be vegetable based, not sugar from fruit based. Blend your fruit or eat your whole fruit. Keep the fiber with it. So again, I could talk about this forever. I'm just saying I probably like 25 to 50% of my audience is health practitioners, nutritionists, RDs, other doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, personal trainers, everyone. Let's just do the right thing. And the right thing is do right by our clients, do right by our patients and do right by our listeners. And let's make sure we promote health first and never a specific agenda. Okay. Jordan is up next. Jordan's writing, Hey Steven, I had a question about food allergy testing. I've heard from various doctors like Chris Kresser and others who believe Cyrex Labs uses the best methods for testing in food allergies. I'm just wondering if you've heard of Cyrex Labs and your personal opinion on it. Okay. So Jordan, absolutely have heard about them. I'm just big on functional medicine lab testing in general. I'm always looking for the best tests. I get a lot of, as a practitioner who reaches a lot of people and a practitioner who teaches a lot of other practitioners and as a practitioner who runs thousands of functional medicine lab tests, a lot of labs come directly to me and they say, hey, check out our new lab, check out our new lab. And unless there's a lot of data, I'm usually not, well, not usually, I'm never going to have my particular people I work with be the guinea pigs for that. However, Cyrex Labs is not one of those people. They are are a tried and tested lab. And what they do is they actually blend IgA and IgG food sensitivity testing together. So they're going to use two of those immunoglobulins, G and A, so much better than using immunoglobulin E, which is great because that's like a fast response. We don't want to test for that. We can, but it's not as great. And they feel that Combining the IgGA, uh, the IgA and the IgG gives you a better and more reproducible lab results. Okay. Here's what I want to tell you. I've used four other food sensitivity testing labs before I settled on the Great Plains uh, Blood Spot Lab card that tested IgG. Here's why. IgG is the main one that most people agree on is the one that needs to be tested. And that's because it looks for latent food-based reactions. This means that when you eat a food anywhere from 24 to 72 hours later, your body can have some type of inflammatory immune response. That is an important test because you will never know really, unless you do the testing, if you're sensitive to a particular food. It's just too difficult to figure out six meals later, which food it was in particular. Easy when you eat something and right away you get a headache, brain fog, itchiness, whatever it might be, right? So, so much harder when you look at the latent response. Why do I also use Great Plains? Here's why. I can replicate it in my own lab. Remember, every lab I use, I spend my own money. This is important for people to know. I spend my own money because I want people obviously to trust me and I want to trust my own results. I do a double blind of my own. I take basically my own samples and I put them on two different cards. Like the IgG, I do the blood spot card. So I put the blood drops in two different cards. I just label them under two different names. I don't know if that's, you know, what people don't feel is under their ethics. My only allegiance is to the people that I work with. My name is all that I have and I want to make sure that people can trust me. So I I just write my name, Stephen Cabral, obviously, and then I make up another name. And I write the same date, and they're done at the same exact time, and they're sent to the lab the same exact date. So I know that both of these two people, one's a made-up name and one's mine, but it's both my blood. If the results look exactly the same, whether it's hair, urine, stool, blood, anything else I could test. If the results are exactly the same, I'm saying, okay, this is a reproducible result. And then I also have the benefit. I have, let's say a dozen different lab companies that I work with, a hundred different nutritional supplement companies that I work with because no one's the best at everything. No one is the best at everything. So I pick the best of the best and that's who I use for myself. That's who I use for my family and the people that I care for my practice. Once I have those results, I also then look for what's the most 
ease of use. So right now with technology the way it is, I can mail this food sensitivity test to anyone in the US, Canada or the UK. They can mail it back. That's the nice thing. With the Cyrex and with the Alcat, both of those are great. We've used those. But the issue is this, is you have to have a blood draw. And to get a blood draw in a lot of states, it's difficult to get that signed off on even if you buy it online. So we don't sell any blood draw based labs. We use other labs, but we'll direct you to them. We just don't we don't sell the blood lab. And as a naturopathic doctor, I don't do blood draws. I refer out basically like I'll point you to the lab. For example, our annual blood lab that I use myself is called Life Extension and we use their blood lab. It's right on my website. We don't sell it. I do an annual review of people's blood labs, but I don't sell it myself. So what I do is I link you to their website. So Jordan, my answer is this. Cyrex is great. If you like them, absolutely. Do please feel free to use them. I like Great Plains Labs. That's who I use. I use the Blood Spot card. I use it. It's our most popular lab, the food sensitivity test. It tests for 94 healthy foods plus Candida. The Cyrex lab does not test for Candida that I know of. LCAT lab will if you do an add-on. The LCAT lab is also about $100 more than the IgG one that I use. So again, I feel very comfortable and I always want to sleep well at night, recommending this lab. It's the number one lab that I see. It matches up well when someone does an organic acids test or does other labs that show they obviously have candida overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth, which is causing this intestinal permeability, which is then leading to all these different food sensitivities. So that was a long-winded answer, but hopefully it answered your question. And uh, you know what? Keep up the great work. All of these questions today really show that people are are really getting into health. And that's what it's all about. They're taking their questions, they're taking their education to the next level. And that is obviously showing in in the quality of these questions. But again, never be afraid, never be just worrisome that your question you don't think is is a good one. Because you can also ask it anonymously or do just what everyone else does and just leave your first name. I'll never read your email or last name, even if you were to include it. So thank you everyone for tuning in. This was a great show. I enjoyed every single one of your questions this weekend. I hope you are enjoying your weekend. And please do tune back in tomorrow for another Mindset and Motivation Monday. We've got a great one and it's talking about how to open your mind to a better life. Take care, everyone. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.